guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I want to talk a bit about ices. I've gotten quite a few questions about ices in the past. So if you're already really familiar with ices and you're using them and you think you know everything about them, that's fine. This video just might not be for you, but because I get a lot of questions about it, I thought it's a topic worth covering. So in today's video, I'm actually partnering up with Fifi. She has a great channel and not only is she a fellow Londoner, she's also a female in the finance space, which I really want to support and encourage because I do think we need more girls in the finance space. Thank you, Anna, for inviting me over to your humble abode, should I say. Personal finance has always been something that has always been a big interest of mine. My background is originally in science and technology, and more specifically, I have a PhD in nanotechnology. I've also had some crazy side hustles like making handbags, running supper clubs, which led to buying a restaurant. I've had two babies in two years, and that spurred me on to think about financials with more structure. I know many mummies out there have the same considerations as me, and this led me to create my channel Fifi Finance, where I share my investing journey with the hope to inspire and learn. Okay, so let's jump in. Right, so what is an ISA? It's essentially a tax-free savings account. There are five main types of ISAs. So there's the cash ISAs, the help to buy ISAs, the innovative finance ISAs, the stocks and shares ISAs, and the lifetime ISAs. I think I got them all there. And there are also junior ISAs, which I will be talking about a little bit more at the end of this video. If you do have kids, then hang on and just find out how I'm investing for my kids too. So in this video, we will cover the most popular ISAs, the cash, the stocks, the shares, and the junior. So ISAs have been around in the current form for about 20 years, and it's a government-backed savings and investments tool. With the majority of people, it's used as a cash saving tool. I say government-backed as it provides tax efficiency. Post-tax earnings are allowed to earn without paying tax on the income generated. Income most typically is generated from the form of income interest, capital gains, when realized as dividends. So you can't have too much of a good thing when it comes to taxes. So the ISAs are capped to a limit per year. For US viewers, those products are similar to Roth IRAs, except you don't need to be retired to release earnings tax-free. That's a score, right? <laughs> so the current allowance here in the UK is 20K per annum, and you can split this any way you like between cash and stock. Okay, so cash ISAs. So a cash ISA is basically just a fancy savings account. All you are doing is putting your money into a savings account that earns interest. However, that interest is tax free and the interest that you earn there does not count towards your personal savings allowance. So you can max out your £20,000 in your cash ISA and then still have the £1,000 personal savings allowance as well. Do note that the £1,000 is actually only for basic rate taxpayers. So if you are in the higher tax bracket, it is only £500 that you get as an allowance. So actually what that means is if you are a higher rate taxpayer, you are better off putting money into a cash ISA than just a standard savings account. So the personal savings allowance basically means you can earn that amount in interest and not have to pay tax on it. So a thousand pounds in interest might seem like a lot of money and it is with the current interest rates the way they are. But what happens when interest rates rise? So essentially saving into an ISA now could protect you from tax in the future. So in terms of your current year's ISA, you can move all of this to another provider or into a stocks and shares ISA, but you cannot have more than one provider of a cash ISA in a single tax year. This is actually a question that I get asked quite often and it is, can I have more than one cash ISA? And the answer is no. So whilst you can split your ISAs into multiple types of ISA, like stocks and shares and cash, you cannot have more than one of the same type of ISA. That's in a single tax year. So you could have a cash ISA with HSBC one year and then a cash ISA with NatWest the next year. It's just, you cannot have a new cash ISA opened with more than one provider in a single tax year. So let's talk about stocks and shares ISAs. The ISA allowance when first allocated was a lot more flexible when it was first introduced 
as it was able to fit all risk profiles. In fact, over the years, the rules have gotten simpler to make the products appealing and open to investors. So you can hold the entire allocation in cash, though for medium to long term investors, that's not a great use of the product because as we know, cash erodes with interest rates being lower than inflation. Now here is where the ISA gets a little bit more sexy. So for a long term investor, the entire allocation can be used towards acquiring stocks, shares, which include things like traded ETFs, investment trusts and funds. The only rule is that you can't open multiple ISAs per tax year. The second important consideration is that the ISA is tax efficiency within the ISA wrapper. So that's no tax on dividends, no taxes on profits and no taxes on capital gains with unrealized profits, which we won't get into here as it's not a common occurrence. So provided you keep the profit and reinvest within the ISA wrapper, you don't pay tax either. Everything in the wrapper is tax free. Now, why is that even important then? Well, as you know, both Anna and I are advocates of achieving financial freedom and investing, which turns your money into little soldiers called capital. It's a key tool in acquiring long-term wealth. There's an interesting quote by the CEO of Stake, Matt Leobitz, and he said, historically, the share market has been one of the greatest creators of wealth for people around the world, but it's been limited to those that have access. But right now, there really is no excuse. With the current array of providers available to us and democratization of investment platforms with robo investors and no comms trading platforms there really are investment solutions available for both passive and active investors so a robo platform essentially can allocate exactly according to a risk profile and that's amazing platforms such as nutmeg wealthify where you can literally answer questions that suit your risk profile and investment horizon so that's the number of years that you are looking to invest for and they pick a diverse strategy to match your exact profile or you can buy a portfolio of dividend stocks with an app like free trade or 212 and it has a video on that or DIY it which does require more work and education alternatively you can just be passive and buy an index tracker which the longer you leave it the lower the risk of you losing your investment which is pretty much what I like to do now we also have the lifetime ISA or the help to buy ISA again this can form part of your total makeup of your ISA allowance within the tax year I know I've said the two names of LISA and help to buy but essentially the LISA replaces the help to buy ISA the idea of it remains the same though you get a four thousand pounds savings allowance and for every year that you max this out the government will give you a 25% top up, so a thousand pounds for free. The idea behind this lifetime ISA is either to use it for a first time home deposit or on your 60th birthday for your retirement, essentially. This is why I'm not a huge fan of these because unless you're gonna use them for a deposit or your retirement, you can't access your money really. In terms of not being able to access the money, you can still access it, but you will be essentially charged a 25% penalty fee for accessing it for any other reason than the two we've discussed. So you can only open one of these if you're aged 18 to 39. Essentially, if you're 40, it's too late. The good thing is though, if you are a couple and you're saving up for your first time home together, you can actually have one each. So they are individual, which means you could actually get a lot more free money if you have one each. All right, so let's talk about child ISAs. Now, the moment your child is born, they have a tax allowance, and they weren't kidding when they say taxes are a certainty for every citizen in the constitution, were they? <laughs> Literally from the moment they're born. What this essentially means is that they have an earning allowance like all members of society. So I do have a more detailed video on my channel about child ISAs, if you are interested. To summarize, children also have an ISA allocation for each tax year. Now, in the current year, it's been bumped up to 9,000 pounds per year and that is doubling the prior year allocation so the cash can be invested in the same way as adult ISAs with any combination of cash stocks ETFs and funds but the main difference is once you deposit the money in the ISA it's their money and you can't remove that money unless there are some very exceptional circumstances which we won't go into here so from the age of 16 your child can manage their account and on the 18th birthday the money is theirs so let's hope they don't blow it on a big party right so now here is the real beauty of the ISA product for children. Once the money is in, it's in. So the investment horizon is 18 years. And that's fantastic because that is one of the most important considerations when investing in stocks. 
time in the market, remember. Now, if you are in that fortunate position of maxing out your child's ISA each year, it's a lot of money, by the way. And to illustrate the power of compounding, if you max out each year and assume a 10% return for a blended index fund, that's 500K in their ISA. And that is the power of compounding, which is where the product part comes in. You don't need to take excessive risk, trade stocks, it's your child's money. So keep it safe, keep it simple. The common convention says for under 18s, between 80 to 100% should be in equity funds. And there are some great ones out there from the likes of Fidelity and Vanguard that track the global equity indices. So there you have it, that's child ISIS for you in a nutshell. If you are interested in hearing about more, then pop over to my channel at Fifi Finance. So should you actually get an ISA? So the first thing to note is that you do actually get a £2,000 a year dividend allowance. So for a portfolio to generate £2,000 a year in dividends at let's say 5%, which is quite a generous assumption because a lot of stocks will pay just under that, you will need £40,000 invested. So that's two years of a fully invested ISA. Now the average person has about £27,000 invested in ISAs which is far below that amount. So the majority of people aren't actually utilizing the tax advantages of ISAs. Now, of course, there is the issue of compound interest to consider as well. Even if you get less than the 2000 pounds dividend allowance a year, if you reinvest those dividends, eventually you will be earning more than the 2000 pounds a year allowance. And because you weren't in an ISA, you won't be protected. So if you do keep things in an ISA, even when they are below that £2,000, your future earnings will be protected when you reinvest them and things like that. The other thing to note is that rules around tax allowances often change. Just a few years ago, the dividend allowance was actually £5,000 a year, and now it's dropped to £2,000. So what if it drops to £1,000 next? You know, Even if you were getting £1,500 a year from dividends, and that was below the allowance, you are then no longer protected because the allowance has changed. Now these considerations are obviously far less important if you are saving towards a first home or for your child. When you're investing for your child, obviously the investment horizon is a lot longer and once you've invested it for your child, the money is no longer yours. With the lifetime ISA, it just makes sense for the extra top up that you get from the government over a short period of time to get one of these if you are looking to buy a house. Let us know in the comments below whether you use ISAs and if you don't, whether this video has changed your mind. But hopefully you have found something useful in this video. Do go check out Fifi's channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.